Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 24th. This first article was sent in by Jesus Freak in 1954 Shadow. This is from Fox News. Scientists in Zurich, Switzerland have successfully quantum transported on a tiny circuit board 10,000 bits of information from point A to point B without going in between. That's the way quantum theory works to where there is not an in-between such as with electronic circuits where the information is transmitted with electrons and in their experiment they had a tiny chip it had two sending units one receiving units and um, the the cool thing about this as far as for computers is having no time lag and being able to do this in a consistent way in experiments in the past where they've teleported like a, a single photon or a single bit of information like that for the experiment to actually succeed, they had to do this thousands and thousands of times. They had, they had about a 1% success rate, whereas this is a consistent sending of 10,000 bits of information from point A to point B, and although it's a short distance, that's fine for computer work. So compared to the other experiments they did where they were teleporting things over a distance of meters or maybe even a little bit larger than that, it was not something that was practical. This may be actually a practical way to make computers with no time lag as far as the circuitry. That's one thing that's slowing computers down now is they have to make the circuits smaller and smaller and they're getting into uh, heat and they're getting into a lot of heating of the circuits, a lot of loss in the circuits because of the fact of having to shrink it down and still using electrons over some form of wire or even using radio waves. It actually takes time to do that, whereas in this experiment there will be no time in these computers. So this may be some practical thing we're actually um, using for quantum computers because it has reached the point now with 10,000 bits of information um, for, per second that you can actually have a functioning computer, so that's kind of cool. This next one was sent in by four people. This was sent in by BK46, Navy Thomas 8, Steve Arsenault, and also KD4YSI, Tony. This is, uh, I've got the YouTube video to this up too, and as usual, all the links and videos or anything else to do with the articles will be down in the description link below. Garmin has just come out, and I think it's on sale as of even this weekend, but Garmin has come out with an action cam. And some of the cool things about, now there's no actual review on what I would really like to see myself is a hands-on review by somebody. I still have not seen an actual hands-on review of somebody getting a hold of it, but there is a one minute, 45 second video, and the link to that will be down below that shows that it seems to be pretty decent quality. Um, obviously being from Garmin, it's going to transmit your GPS location. That's pretty much a given, and it's nice to see another major player with some bucks behind it too to compete against Drift and GoPro and some of the other ones, especially with Contour dying lately. Um, another one of the features I really like too is they have an autocorrect of the fisheye effect. Now, I'm not really disturbed by it too much on the GoPro or other cameras like that, but some people really are concerned with the edges being curved. Well, evidently they've got some kind of a compensation circuit in the Garmin camera to be able to take care of that. And they also have digital shake compensation too. So if you're getting into action filming and the video is kind of shaky, the camera can correct that itself on board. So um, hopefully somebody will in the next few days get a hands-on review of it. Uh, maybe even a moto vlogger. That's what I would even prefer if somebody knows of a moto vlogger that gets a hold of this uh, anytime soon. Let me know and send me the link to them, and I'd love to feature it. But nice to see Garmin as another player in the in the game, too, so that we uh, have a little bit more competition going. This next one is for fans of Star Trek, and I am definitely a Trekkie from the original series. Walter Koenig and, uh, is actually um, going to start a Star Trek series. Well, it's actually in production right now. It's called Renegades. And also the uh, actor that plays uh, Tim Russa, Tim Russ, the actor that plays Tuvok, or that played Tuvok in the Voyager series, uh, not the Voyager series, he was in Enterprise, no, he was Voyager, yeah, he was Voyager, let me get this right, there's so many Star Treks to keep track of, but anyway, this new Renegades episode, they uh, did a Kickstarter project, and they met the minimum goals, but now they want to even polish it up a little bit more, and present it as something possibly for CBS, or maybe a, a cable network to, to come up with, or something like that, but check out the video, it looks like they're really serious about this. I mean, you've got even other players in it, like Garrett Wang. You've got a lot of original Star Trek stars that are behind this independent production. And uh, I wouldn't even mind seeing it as a fan production if there's enough support, such as Kickstarter. And this is from Indiegogo, which is another independent source looking for support for something going on. Um, I would like to see a, a fan-supported series that was even pretty much majority or totally supported by the fans. And let's just tell the networks and the rest of them, you know, screw you guys. If we like a series, you're not going to cancel it on us anymore. We're going to support it ourselves. So if you get a chance and you're a Star Trek fan, check out the links to this. Check out the video. 
Um, the basic plot of this, I'll give you just the basic rundown of the plot. It's, it's 10 years after Voyager's return um, from the Delta Quadrant, and what's happening is for some reason there's some kind of a, a, a time thing, uh, some kind of a time warp that's cutting off certain planets from the Federation where they can get the dilithium crystals. So they've tried, the Federation itself has tried many legal means to, pry, to try to correct this problem, so they've decided they have to kind of go underground with this a little bit, and I guess uh, Admiral Chekhov and, uh, the, uh, t and uh, Commander Tuvok are going to be part of a, a group called Section 31. They're kind of like beyond the law or kind of like working around the law or something like that. They're not subject to Federation rules and regulations and going to try to work undercover to solve this problem. So looks like a good idea. If you're a Star Trek fan, definitely check it out. And last up, Sharper Than Hubble. They're actually working on casting a mirror now for a telescope called the Magellan Telescope. They've cast, I think right now they're casting the, the third mirror for it. And it's going to have seven primary mirrors, 27 feet across. And it's going to weigh about 20 tons when complete. This thing's going to be, um, in 2020, it's going to be set up and functioning in Chile, which is where most of the telescopes are. But it's just amazing with the adaptive optics, they're going to actually be able to create images 10 times sharper than even Hubble. So that's kind of nice with Hubble reaching the end of its lifespan and uh, being able to have something on the ground base. What they're going to do is, uh, besides the seven primary mirrors, they're going to have seven secondary mirrors with adaptive optics that's going to be able to clear up any kind of distortions from the atmosphere, such as heat waves or just the atmosphere itself creates distortion, and these seven secondary mirrors are going to be able to correct for that. This is a cost of $700 million total, which actually I don't think is really that bad for the cost um, of, a, of a telescope of that kind and to be able to do things... Uh, and see things ten times sharper. I, th I think it's a very good investment and everything. So, um, look in the future. Maybe I'll be able to. Uh, in the chance it's going to be, if the TDD report is still going on in 2020, that's seven years. I've actually uh, be. This will be starting this coming September. Yeah, as you see, if you see the next TDD report, it will actually be starting my seventh season. So if I go for seven more seasons, who knows? I may be reporting of the startup of the Magellan Telescope. So anyway. That's it for this week, everybody. Take care. I will catch you next week.